I wanted to talk slightly about this little clip that I've seen on one of my favorite YouTube podcast things that talks about techno um, called That's Techno Team. You can find it on YouTube. They've also got a pretty cool um, IG where they post loads of reels of some of the um, content they speak about. But this particular clip kind of surprised me because I guess I was unaware that people go to nightclubs and take crystal meth. I, I don't know. I, I'm aware of people take doing, you know, pills, doing ketamine, doing coke, doing acid, doing GHB and stuff. But I never thought people would be in there doing crystal meth, to be fair. So I'm really surprised. But one of the guys on that techno team admitted to basically doing some of it back in the day and having friends that do it also. So it kind of made me think about the things that people get up to on the dance floor when they're having a good time and shit and how sometimes you can maybe trick yourself into thinking you're the you know you're the one on the dance floor that's being the liability when everyone around you is actually off their heads to be honest so let's actually play the clip and see what these guys are saying also what was particularly hard for me was also that um but 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 i think i have that in general the collapsing of people uh -huh. yeah tell me more um more. i think uh i think um uh, we all do drugs um, <laughs> I, I, I'm also very vocal that I use GHB, uh, always very vocal because I don't believe in demonizing a drug, uh, because that, 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 that would mean no GHB, but then tons of speed and ketamine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or other drugs. I, I, yeah, I do believe that GHB and GBL in Berlin, um, are problematic mm -hmm. because they are problematic. They were also very just problematic. Just in Berlin? Just yeah, in Berlin? Why are they problematic um, in Berlin? No, it's also problematic, problematic in London. It's also very problematic. It was very problematic in Amsterdam. Mm. We see a change now in Amsterdam, though. The GHB thing is still something that kind of surprises me because, again, I, I'm so naive when it comes to sort of stuff because I guess I have such an infantile relationship with drugs and alcohol in the UK because everyone just does the same shit ad nauseum. No one really tries to explore or delve deeper. Maybe there are other parts of the nightlife scene that i've been a part of that do that but the places i've been to and i feel like i've been to a, a few different types of parties and scenes in london everyone just does the same thing rinse and repeat so when i finally did see people when i was in that burger and toilet that one time um which is always the greatest times to go in there when you want to do some of your gear and you happen to befriend a group of people in the queue before you go in and you end up sharing a cubicle i love those occasions because those are usually a good indication of people thinking you're chill right in that short interaction in a queue or maybe sharing a couple of jokes or maybe just from your vibe and no words being spoken they're like you know what you seem cool would you want to come into our cubicle and do your stuff with us so you don't have to wait ages for people to leave and do it by yourself yeah no problem of course i will so you go in there and you just you know you get chatting and you start doing your stuff and it's fucking fun i fucking love it so one time that happened i was in a cubicle with a bunch of gay dudes who were really nice actually we had some really funny cool little conversations in there but i just, I just remember them starting to do gsp and i didn't know what it was at the time so all, all i remember them is them kind of getting a water bottle and kind of pouring a and being like literal scientists and doctors in there and making sure they pour that particular amount into that fucking lid and then it was shaking and it maybe take a bit off they were being very strict very kind of proper about it you know? and then obviously passing it around and sort of like drinking that little thing from the lid and obviously from GHB from what I've heard you have to be very disciplined in terms of the dosage you have to be disciplined when it comes to not mixing it with other drugs or alcohol and shit because it can get really dicey very quickly so it's nice that the lady on the left here on the right sorry um I forgot what club she's a part of I remember it being featured on the Dust Techno team and we kind of gave her 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 juice and her flowers because she was really entertaining and very informative in the podcast show herself so I recommend you check it out so um let me see if i can grab the video here there this is um episode number six and it features a guest and her name is isabel ho kang um and isabel ho kang is according to the description a true og raver an active part of amsterdam's beating nightlife and a co-founder in este community promoter artist manager and the list goes on join our our trio as we have a conversation about gen z illegal raves amsterdam v berlin risky consumption of trends challenges of the scene as always feel free to join the conversation blah 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 so yeah she's she was really good so big up um isabel ho kang for opening up in this conversation 
situation. But yeah, I do remember that first time I saw random guys in a Bergheim toilet um, taking GSB and wondering what it was. But again, like I said, I'm a big pussy. I do the stuff that I do and only that. And I didn't really want to take part. So I just was happy to have the conversation. Um, and then later on, I found out that it became a big issue, especially during the pandemic. Um, here in London also, um, people were just trying to basically, you know, numb the pain of being inside all the time and seeing their futures and whatever else be kind of, you know, shot up in flames because of this fucking crazy virus. So they're just kind of doing drugs to sort of well away the time. And that's when people started to get a bit crazy. Addiction started to spiral and things started to get a bit risky, risque. But I also was somebody that was a little bit, oh, you know, I wouldn't say I was a bit suspicious of the demonization of the GHB thing. I was like, isn't this just like every other drug that you take that if you go over the topic and kind of start controlling your life? And I'm glad that some people are coming out and saying, hey, I do it and I do it safely. But I do understand some people do go a bit crazy, but let's not demonize things because all of these things are bad. Do you know what I mean? If you actually want to live in a, um, if you actually want to have a somewhat of a healthy life, maybe cutting out all those things is probably the way to go. But because that's not likely, let's actually have an honest conversation around how to use these things safely. And obviously also say there are people out there that are doing it on a regular basis or maybe want to go out and have no issue whatsoever. So yeah, big up her. Let's play the video. Why? Um, why, why is there a change? How is because there a change? we try not to demonize it. Okay. Okay. And talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, I would never advise someone mm -hmm. young to uh, to start using this drug mm -hmm. because I think it's a very dangerous uh, uh, drug. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, in uh, ancient times, mm -hmm. no, I'm just kidding. Uh, they used to even use uh, crystal meth in Berkeley, you know, yeah. and you don't see that. No, um, I I have seen that. You have seen. It. I have seen yeah. that in my time. Yeah, I mean, they they used to uh, they call it uh, Tina or whatever. Yeah. Uh, not a trend anymore and i'm asking myself what what happened there that made it un uninteresting anymore for many uh or do did the users just die or um, <laughs> so, oh, i don't so think it's <laughs> a very uh, it's a very sustainable drug okay it's not sustainable I, I, no no and hard and, party, and, and, and hard to party yeah. so if you get an addiction you would yeah. do it uh, at home with your friends mm. yes so or many, many of like heroin, heroin for example yeah, like yeah. heroin yeah. many of the people that i knew because uh, I, I used to take it um regularly I would say not excessively compared to many. Uh, I never. <laughs> I love that, innit? All of us caners are the same, innit? We have a real inability to just like, yeah, I take it, have a good time, it's good. There's always that fucking disclaimer. I do it a lot regularly, but not a lot. It's like, bro, come on, come on, come on. You know what I mean? Like, the fact that you do it is you do it. And the fact that you do it socially when you go out and you go out often, it means Rosaki, you do it a lot. It is what it is. But I love how we all have this kind of ability to try to trick our brain into thinking that we're not doing the thing a lot when we are doing it a lot because we enjoy it. It just is what it is. Um, I guess to the regular person who doesn't do it, it sounds absolutely crazy. But if you're amongst people who are in the same scene as you and, you know, they, they like the same thing that you like, you should be comfortable to say, you know what, I do it. Um, I've got it under control. No real big issue in there and just kind of keep it moving. But hey, what do I know? There you go. Uh, collapsed in public or something like this mm. um uh but i was taking it for most parties um i haven't for well this year at least i, I don't plan to anymore <laughs> as i've realized that i, I just uh, <laughs> he nearly wanted to say like a long time is like this year at least <laughs> honestly it's, it, i love how we all have the same type of like language and cadence you know what i mean it's like when you're <laughs> when you're when you're clean you haven't done nothing for two weeks and you feel like you haven't done nothing for half a year it's like bruh Wind your neck in, man. It hasn't been that long. I mean, two weeks, you start fucking posting up fucking motivational quotes and pictures of yourself drinking green juice and having cold brews in the morning and going for a run. It's like, it's only been two weeks, bro. And you're only not doing it because you have no money. Not because <laughs> you have a choice <laughs> or the option to do it. It's so funny. Don't need it uh, mm. to, to, to uh, without still being <laughs> an anecdote, you know? Yeah. As it, it, was, it was just... I realized it was just excessive, you know, mm. gratuitous. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, many of the people who I know <coughs> from COVID times and a, a little bit before COVID times, I'm like, say late, late 2019, um, who I knew were taking it regularly, the vast majority I'm still friends with don't touch it now yeah. at all. Yeah. Most of them are not kind of anti it. Like, yeah. I don't want to be around people taking it because they understand it, but also don't feel the need for it for their experience now. Mm. And this includes DJs, party organizers, ravers. Um, there are a few that still are. Um, I, but I, I have less and less 
contact kind of naturally um generally with, with like people in that um in that scene is i have noticed there is kind of we rarely see anyone who's let's say obviously <clears throat> obviously subjectively you know because yes. i know i know what it looks like if someone is is taking a lot of this drug um but there's very few people at for example drift or these smaller parties where um it's like yeah so what you described yeah. is a like if i see someone collapsing uh that ruins my mood yeah. for the rest of the party it, yeah. like not just from a point of i'm worried about this person's health but also the point of like this is making me hyper aware that because this person's done that and actually that person is clearly taking g that person that person that person is this gonna happen again you know what's really funny though in berlin they have such a no tolerance vibe around people that collapse you go to many clubs many a club some of the most popular ones out there the bird kinds the this the that and they will legitimately chuck these motherfuckers out i think Bergheim have this um, process where they have like an ambulance or something around the corner around the back so as you're queuing up in front of the door on your left hand side there's like a on a left and then you turn a right there's allegedly some sort of ambulance there or something right i've never gone around that cycle i always go the other way to go home and shit or to go back to my um, airbnb or hotels are usually in the other direction but there's usually some sort of like awareness team van ambulance there's something there they always point people to go over there i've seen people walk all the time get chucked out and they point them over there they have no tolerance for like trying to make sure the person's better or anything they don't want any of that shit if anything it's like um I wonder if it's a plausible deniability. It's just they don't want somebody to die on their premises because they took too many drugs. So they'll just rather you go outside and sort it out on your own. <laughs> I remember one time specifically, there was this girl that was super fucked that was talking to me while I was sitting down somewhere. And I guess I wasn't really noticing because I wasn't really paying attention to what she was saying. I was on my phone. And then I guess someone must have noticed her being too crazy and acting too drunk. So they told the bouncer but then she was sitting next to me and shit and i guess she was moving around a lot so i took her bag and she was falling on the floor and i put her bag next to me like she was like moving i was just like, okay cool i'll just put on my phone whatever like let her do what she wants and then when she's ready she can take her bag but i guess in the confusion of what was going on a security guard came took her straight away by the time i realized she was getting took and i remembered oh shit the bag's on the floor so i went to go and follow them to go give her a bag before she got chucked out and then that's when I saw the whole like, oh yeah, go around the corner thing. And they had no regard. And then when I even, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure when I gave the guy the bag to give to the girl, he literally like, you know, like he did like a frisbee throw <laughs> to her down the road. It was like, look, get the fuck out of here. So maybe the attitude around them is like, hey, um, don't bring your problems here. Like, don't like bring all your fucking struggles and pains here and then try and drown them out here and then have us be responsible for you. That's unfair. So like kind of a sort of like, hey, do your drugs responsibly. Be a grown up. Don't get too fucked up to a point where you can't handle yourself. But if you do, we're not going to look after you. We're not going to baby you. We're going to leave you out there on the street so you can fend for yourself because you put yourself in this position. Or it's just a, like, hey, we don't want to get shut down. And the last thing that we want on our conscience or on our record is that somebody passed away here or whatever it may be. And it's going to make us look bad. So we'd rather you kind of pass away on the streets type of thing. It's kind of wild, but I've seen it happen often. Um, the custom of people inside the clubs makes you spoil the night. Not really, to be fair. It doesn't ruin my night. Um, I completely understand why it's happening. People just doing too much, unfortunately. Because I guess I live in a country where people do it too much anyway. We are the land of too much. That's why we always have the government have to step in and, you know, enact laws to ban things because we can never enjoy things in moderation. A good example is the balloons. Maybe the balloons thing is like a weird psyop. It's like a weird sort of like covert operation by the government to essentially extinguish any sort of fun that people from the working class have or whatever because balloons were a really cheap way for people who don't have much money to get high without being too damaging to themselves or what's a way of people that don't have much money don't want, don't want to get involved in heavy drug selling could maybe make some money by selling balloons and canisters and shit so maybe it was the government's approach to ban that whole thing to sort of like diminish that aspect of things who knows but we can't deny that people went od when they went to balloons in in the uk we went too hard to the point where kids are in hospital with like internal organ failure some i saw a story of somebody that essentially became paraplegic because they took too many fucking balloons so we do stuff to, to an excess and to a point where we give the government no other choice but to step in and sort of like baby us and give us rules and shit and regulation about what you can and can't do anymore so 
maybe because of that um, and me seeing a lot of people on dance floors collapsing and fainting, um, you know, Fabric alone, I've probably seen like 10 people collapse on that dance floor. And it's usually because they've just done too much. And um, so I'm not really, you know, it doesn't really phase me. And I know, again, like I said, I know it's most likely their fault for just not being a little bit more aware of their body, understanding how much they can take and how much they can't take. And I don't want to let that ruin my night because again, it's London. I've only got four hours to rave anyway. I can't be <laughs> sitting here, standing here, sorry, worried about the next man when I've, I've paid £35 to get in and I've got four hours to get loose and dirty before they chuck me out right on the dot. So that maybe plays into all of it. But I was just more surprised that crystal meth has become a drug of choice in the scene. It kind of alleviates a lot of the concerns and fears I have when I go out and I sometimes have this, you know, dread if, dread, dreadful feeling that I'm being a liability, that I'm doing too much, that I'm too fucked up. It's like, bro, I'm not even doing that much crazy stuff really when I'm on the dance floor. So if anything, you should make you feel somewhat comforted that even at your worst, right? You're not there on the dance floor like a zombie, like other people are when they're doing other things. Um, and then maybe just to kind of keep it in mind to just do your drugs well, which is a really hard thing to do, to be that mature, to be able to kind of, um, you know, drink responsibly and do drugs responsibly. People just don't do it like that. It's like even with cigarettes and shit, people always take shit to an excess. So I don't know what, I don't know how that comes about. If that's a maturity thing, if that's a, how most humans learn where you have to get legitimately burnt and then you realize, oh shit, I'm doing too much. Or if it's something that you can actually learn along your kind of like journey of discovering new parts of the scene and evolving and maturing and blah, 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 blah. I don't really know. But I was kind of shocked to see that there are people on the dance floor taking crystal meth. But it does explain quite a bit about Berlin and that scene overall because if anything, they are probably got the opposite problem that we have. We probably do the thing where we do the same drugs all the time, you know, ad nauseum, because we only have a limited hours of going out and we don't have the time to experiment. Whereas they have clubs are open 17 plus hours so you have every time all the time in the world sorry to do what you want to kind of get a bit crazy get a bit loose and it kind of would be a waste of an opportunity not to get crazy right not to try a micro dose not to try other types of drugs not to try maybe you know research chemicals whatever you want to try you're probably within your you're probably it's if there's any perfect time to do it it'll probably be if you live over there so I completely understand why they go that far and why they try other things and dibble dabble. But I just don't think it would work here, unfortunately. Put, unfortunately. Like, imagine trying to take an LSD or an acid trip in a regular club in London. Like, it's a waste of time, right? I mean, by the time that kicks in, you're already chucked out. <laughs> now you have to fend for yourself in a Jubilee line. Good luck. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not going to work. But yeah, um, big up that, that's, that's Techno Team. One of my more favorite um, pods to listen to. I know some people don't like it because they say like, you know, it's just these guys kind of bloviating about the scene and shit. But I'm sorry. I love to bloviate myself. I love to ramble myself. I love to take... Um, things like nightlife and clubbing way more seriously than what they actually are and these guys are the personification of it because they live in one of the most you know professional clubbing environments in the world in Berlin and even the conversation they had around like Amsterdam and Berlin competition in terms of what's better place in nightlife because I've heard a lot of people I've seen a lot of my friends who are associated with nightlife moving out to Amsterdam and shit and they've been enjoying themselves over there and one particular um, person I know online basically said at the time they went to the school that it was actually a better vibe than they went to Berghain it's actually a better party so clearly there's a good atmosphere and a scene over there bubbling so for me um i like listening to these sort of things and hearing it so if you like that sort of stuff also i recommend you check out their youtube channel it's das which is d-a-s techno team on youtube um they've got loads of cool little videos out there and of course they've got a good little social media presence they probably do the thing that i should do when it comes to social media online and clipping myself and putting it online but i don't usually do it but hey what can you do um big up that techno team big up that little discussion check it out if you haven't got that time check it out if you like that sort of stuff and you got that time